Good afternoon and welcome to the California Department of Water Resources virtual public hearing for the Delta Conveyance Project Draft Environmental Impact Report. It's just at 12 p.m. now and we'll wait just a couple of minutes to give everyone some time to join the meeting. Thank you. It's now 12.02 and we'll go ahead and get started. Again, this is the virtual public hearing for the Department of Water Resources or DWR, Delta Conveyance Project Draft Environmental Impact Report or EIR. My name is Pam Chanel, and I will serve as the facilitator today. Thank you for joining us. We are interpreting today's hearing into Spanish and Chinese, specifically Cantonese, and I will walk through how to get into the language channels, and then I'll ask our interpreters to share that information in both Spanish and Cantonese. You can listen to today's hearing in English by staying in this main channel or by joining the English channel. You do this by clicking the interpretation button on your screen and selecting English. If you do not join the English channel, you'll still hear the meeting in English and have an opportunity to make verbal comment, but you will not hear Spanish or Cantonese comments translated into English. If you'd like to listen to the presentation and the comments in Spanish, click the interpretation button at the bottom of your screen and select Spanish. If you would like to listen to the presentation and comments in Cantonese, Click the interpretation button at the bottom of your screen and select Chinese. Joining us today to provide Spanish translation is Reina, and she will now give instructions on how to join the Spanish channel. Hola y muy buenos días a todos. Mi nombre es Reina Rodríguez y mi colega Emilia Rivera. El día de hoy nosotras vamos a estar proveyendo interpretación al español. Si desea escuchar la presentación y o hacer cualquier comentario en español, siéntase libre de participar de esta manera. Ahorita, para accesar la interpretación, favor de, ser, de seleccionar el icono que aparece abajo de su pantalla, que aparece un mundo, va a hacer clic al icono y después va a seleccionar su lenguaje de preferencia. En este caso, va a ser español. También puede hacer clic en New Original Audio o seleccion, silenciar el audio original para que de esta manera solamente escuche en su lenguaje de preferencia. A través de la presentación, le invitamos a someter sus comentarios en español y si usted usted planea hacer un comentario verbal el día de hoy, nosotros estaremos aquí para interpretarlo al inglés. Si desea unirse a la reunión solamente por teléfono y no por la plataforma de Zoom, para escuchar en español, favor de llamar al número de conferencia en español al 602-580-9700. Seguido por el código de acceso 8833787. Back to you, Pam. Thank you, Reina. Also joining us today to provide Cantonese translation is Nathan, and he will now give instructions on how to join the Cantonese channel. Thank you, Pam. Ma da ga kam yat chao chao san na. 如果你想今日听取我哋嘅听证会系用中文，尤其系粤语嘅话咧。你可以点选我哋 Zoom 嘅一个口译功能，咁而家同你讲下点样去做啦。咁同时同我哋提供粤语翻译嘅咧，亦都有专天。咁你麻烦睇下而家 Zoom 屏幕右下方有一个语言嘅选项，点选出嚟之后咧，有唔同嘅语言选择，咁里面亦都包含咗广东话，应该系写住 Chinese 嘅。咁如果你有考虑唔想听到佢嘅英文原音，而净系听到中文嘅话咧，请记得关咗原音静音 （mute original audio）， 咁样你就可以听到全程粤语嘅演说以及评论。仲有，如果你今日打算使用口头评论呢个机会嘅话咧，我哋会帮助你将你哋嘅评论翻译成英文。如果你喺一个冇啊网络接线嘅地方，需要用电话参加会议嘅话咧，我哋会建议你打呢一个电话六零五。三一三五八一四，再讲多次，六零五三一三五八一四，打打入号码系六五九八四八，今日可以听到我哋同时一样嘅粤语嘅直诶同时翻译啦，唔该晒 ，Thank you Pam，Thank you Nathan，We'll now open the language channels，We are running this hearing using Zoom webinar which mutes all participants when not speaking。When it's your turn to make a comment, we'll ask that you unmute your microphone. In this webinar, only DWR representatives and I will appear on camera. We are recording and transcribing this hearing. If you would like to turn captions on or off, 
click the live transcript icon on the bottom of your screen and click the enable option. If you experience technical difficulties today and need to dial into the hearing, the call-in number is 1-888-788-0099. The webinar ID is 882-3618-0216. And the passcode is 345 979. This information is also in the chat box. If you need to reach a member of the project team for technical support, please contact Delta Conveyance at water.ca.gov. We will conduct this public hearing in two parts. First, DWR will provide a brief overview of the Delta Conveyance project and draft EIR. Then we will have a facilitated comment session for you to provide verbal comments on the draft EIR for the official comment record. There will not be a question and answer session today and DWR will not be answering your comments at this hearing. Your comments will be addressed in the final EIR. If you have questions about how to find information in the draft EIR, email delta conveyance comments at water.ca.gov. Each person will have up to three minutes to make a comment. To allow us to hear from as many people as possible, each person can make one verbal comment today. We will receive as many comments as time allows. If you are not called on to provide a verbal comment today, you may provide a comment in writing, via email, or regular mail, or the comment form on the draft EIR website. If you do make a verbal comment today, you can also mail or email additional comments until the close of the comment period. We will share the email, mail, and website address for submitting comments throughout today's meeting. All comments are treated equally whether received verbally, via email, or in writing. Now I would like to introduce Carrie Buckman with DWR. She is the Delta Conveyance Project Environmental Program Manager and will give a short overview presentation. Carrie? Thanks, Pam. I want to start by thanking you for coming to today's meeting. We really appreciate that you are taking your time to engage in this process. The last three drought years have been really hard and have reinforced the need to plan for new climate conditions. While there are multiple, multiple potential future scenarios of climate change, climate experts generally agree that we are going to see less snow and more rain over shorter and less predictable durations. As the weather of last year indicates, rainstorms will be flashier, shorter, more intense storms. We also expect more extreme weather events like frequent drought and flood cycles. The goal of the Delta Conveyance Project is to capture water when it's available during high flow periods to potentially store for later use. Adding points of diversion, creating flexibility, helps prepare for changed climate conditions and promotes a more resilient and flexible state water project or SWP. Our need to prepare for changed climate conditions led to the fundamental reason that we are considering this project. We want to consider ways to modernize the aging SWP infrastructure in the Delta to restore and protect the reliability of SWP water deliveries in a cost-effective manner, consistent with the state's water resilience portfolio. DWR, as the owner and operator of the state water project, wants the SWP to be able to continue to function in the face of multiple challenges. These challenges are reflected in our objectives. Address sea level rise and climate change, minimize water supply disruption due to seismic risk, protect water supply reliability, and provide operational flexibility to improve aquatic conditions. DWR issued a notice of preparation on January 15th of 2020 to announce the preparation of a draft environmental impact report or EIR 
analyzing the potentially significant impacts of the proposed Delta conveyance project. We issued the draft EIR on July 27th of this year. This graphic shows the three main alternatives being considered in the draft EIR, but DWR would only select a single tunnel along one alignment to implement if the project moves forward. The draft EIR identifies the Bethany Reservoir alternative as the proposed project. This is a different alternative from what was identified in our notice of preparation. As part of the development of the draft EIR, we considered alternatives that may be able to reduce or reduce significant impacts. And we found that the Bethany alternative does have the potential to reduce effects. As a result, we changed our proposed project to the Bethany Reservoir alternative in the draft EIR. The Bethany Reservoir alternative includes two intakes on the Sacramento River in the North Delta for a capacity of 6,000 cubic feet per second, or CFS. Water would move from the intakes through a single tunnel to the South Delta. The tunnel alignment follows the purple alignment on the figure through most of the Delta near I-5. The tunnel alignment then turns south and follows the orange alignment on the map. At the end of the tunnel, a pump station would lift water from the tunnel up to the existing Bethany Reservoir on the California Aqueduct. The alternatives to the proposed project follow either a central or an eastern alignment and could have capacities ranging from 3000 CFS to 7500 CFS. They have either one, two, or three intakes in similar locations to the Bethany Reservoir alternative on the Sacramento River. The tunnels connecting the intakes to the South Delta follow different routes. The central alignment moves through the central Delta, shown with a blue line, and the eastern alignment follows an alignment closer to I-5, shown with a purple line. At the end of the tunnel, there is a pump station that lifts water to the surface into a southern forebay to regulate flows before they are conveyed to the existing Banks pumping plant. While the figure shows three alignments, each represents a different alternative, and DWR would select one tunnel only if the project moves forward. All of the action alternatives would divert water during high flow conditions, following a set of operational criteria designed to minimize effects to fish and water quality. The draft EIR also includes a no project alternative that represents likely conditions if the project is not implemented, including reasonably foreseeable changes in existing conditions and potential alternate actions that may be taken absent implementation of the Delta Conveyance Project, such as increased conservation, recycling, and desalination. DWR has prepared the Delta Conveyance Project draft EIR to comply with the requirements of the California Environmental Quality Act, or CEQA. The draft EIR evaluated the effects of the proposed project examined a range of potentially feasible alternatives that meet the project objectives, and identified mitigation measures to avoid or lessen impacts, lessen significant impacts on the physical environment. We are here to listen to comments so we can work to disclose impacts and mitigation as clearly and accurately as possible. The draft EIR is available for public review and comment through October 27th. We will consider all comments submitted on the draft EIR and we will respond in writing to all substantive comments received during comment period in the final EIR to help inform decision makers. Public comments are very important to this process. They provide an opportunity to refine the analysis of environmental impacts and develop feasible mitigation. Public comments are the best way to make us, the lead agency, aware of concerns related to the environmental analysis. They are an opportunity to address concerns related to any potential direct or indirect impacts to the physical environment. Effective comments are concise, focusing on the environmental analysis and the draft EIR, relate to the project's potential for impacts on the physical environment, identify the specific part of the draft EIR at issue, and include supporting evidence or facts, such as references or citations to specific websites. So I think those are the end of my slides. So Pam, back to you. Great, thank you so much, Carrie. That concludes our presentation. We'll now move into the second portion of the meeting and take verbal comments on the draft EIR. As a reminder, you will have three minutes to make your comment 
and you will only be called on once to make a comment. We would like to hear verbal comments from tribal leadership and local, state, or federal elected officials first. To assist with timing, we will display a countdown timer on the screen. When three minutes have passed, I will give a verbal notice and then your mic will be muted shortly after. At the start of your comment, please state your full name for the record. We appreciate your assistance in adhering to the three minute time limit so that we can allow as many people as possible to comment. A court reporter is transcribing the verbal comments received today. All substantive comments will be responded to in the final EIR. Please be respectful of everyone who provides comments during today's meeting. You each have a unique and valued perspective, and no one comment is considered more important than another. Comments that are directed to or are about another commenter are not in line with the intent of today's meeting and will not be allowed. Finally, any speaker that uses inappropriate language may be placed on mute or removed from the online platform. There may not be enough time to hear from all commenters today. Following this hearing and until October 27th, 2022, comments can be submitted in writing. All comments are weighed equally, whether shared verbally today, sent in an email, letter, or through the website. Comments can be emailed to deltaconveyancecomments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR. Attention, Delta Conveyance Office, P.O. Box 942836, Sacramento, California, 94236-0024. We would like to hear verbal comments from tribal leadership and local, state, or federal elected officials first. Please raise your hand now to identify if you are a tribal leader or an elected official and you wish to make a comment today. Thank you. We'll begin with Melissa. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can, thank you. Great, hello, my name is Melissa Tayaba. Um, I am the vice chair of Shingle Springs Band of Miwok Indians. Um, and I'm also director of tech for Shingle Springs. My ancestral homeland spans seven California counties, including Sac, El Dorado, Amador, Sutter, Yellow, Placer, and Yuba counties. Since the beginning of time, we have lived among the various waterways, taking care of the land, the rivers, the streams, the plants, animals, and our traditional resources. The proposed Delta Conveyance Project is a direct and imminent threat to our culture, history, traditions, natural resources, and our way of life. We are strongly opposed to this project. We have submitted a letter to DWR and are also now publicly requesting an extension of the comment period on the DEIR. The current comment period provides insufficient time for us to review and provide meaningful comments on the DEIR. <clears throat> the appendices alone are several hundreds of pages in length. The primary purpose of CEQA is to allow tribes and the public a meaningful opportunity to comment and provide input on projects threatening environmental and cultural resources, such as the Delta Conveyance Project. We're currently reviewing and developing comments, but cannot complete a sufficiently thorough review by the current October 27th deadline. We understand that other tribes and multiple other members of the interested public have also requested extensions of the comment deadline due to the length and complexity of the DEIR and the importance of the issues. In addition, it appears that the DEIR is not completely final as we recently received notice of a change sheet in which DWR is continuing to make changes to the DEIR even while the comment period runs. We should not be required to comment on a document that is not yet final. At minimum, the comment period should be extended. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Tayaba, for your comment. Our next commenter is Anna Starkey. Good afternoon. My name is Anna Starkey, and I'm the Cultural Regulatory Specialist in the Tribal Historic Preservation Department 
with the United Auburn Indian Community of the Auburn Rancheria. The UAIC is in strong opposition to the Delta Conveyance Project. But to be clear, we are in support of water solutions for the state of California, but we maintain that the position that the proposed Delta Conveyance Project will have irreparable impacts to the Delta as a tribal cultural landscape and that does not outweigh the projected water solutions for the proposed project. Since February of 2021, UASC has extensively consulted in good faith effort with the Department of Water Resources on this project. In each consultation meeting, UASC made their position against the project known to DWR staff and explained the devastating effects that this project would pose on tribal cultural and ecological resources, tribal cultural items, and places of tribal cultural significance. The Delta and the Delta ecology is tied to UAIC, as well as other tribes through cultural stories, important places and people, cultural materials and sites, and regional California Native American pre-colonial and post-colonial history. UAIC views the Delta Conveyance Project as a continuation of California's state-driven policies and history of cultural and ecological genocide of California Native American peoples. The draft EIR has several critical shortcomings and it does not adequately convey the cultural significance of the region nor the devastating effects of this project. UAIC requests that the draft EIR comment period be extended for at least 90 days because of the weightiness of these issues. In the future, UAIC is willing to continue to, to with discussions and consultation with DWR on tenable and future water-based solutions in the state of California based on traditional ecological knowledge, also short for TEK, and is that it's also integrated with sound science-based solutions. Thank you. Thank you so much for your comment. Before we continue into our comment session, we'll take just a few minutes to allow our interpreters to get settled to begin interpretation for participants listening in Spanish or in Cantonese. Thank you. Thank you all for your patience. We'll now begin taking verbal comments, and I'm going to check in with our interpreters to see if there are any participants on the Spanish and Cantonese telephone lines who would like to provide comments. Reina and June team, please raise your hand if you have commenters when you're ready. Okay, thank you. At this point, we will now begin calling on people with their hands raised to make verbal comments. If you would like to make a comment, please raise your hand by using the raise your hand option on the screen or by pressing star nine if you're on the phone. Please remember that we're doing simultaneous interpretation, so please speak slowly and clearly. Remember, you will have three minutes to make your comment and you will only be called on once to make a comment. I apologize in advance for mispronouncing anyone's names. Our first commenter will be Gloria Alonso. I'm also going to read the names of the next several commenters so that you'll be ready for your turn. Pete Ramirez, Brenda Bass, Victor Reyes, Liz Amston, Joanne John Armstrong. Thank you. Our first commenter should have received a notice to come off of mute. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. All right. Hello, members of the board and trustees. Um, I am a senior intern with Restored Delta and a Metropolitan Planning GIS and GIS student at Sacramento State. As I welcome fall today, I say bye to my second summer conducting microsystem tests in the waterway surrounding Stockton, a Central Valley community within Region 5. Over the past weeks, I have begun to analyze the observations throughout my field work with the Restorative Delta Science Program and how it plays a role in the drafting of the EIR. Harmful algae, algae blooms are one threatening layer to the spatial is issues within the Delta and its most vulnerable populations. Planning for water management infrastructure must reflect this concern and address the demands of climate change impacting the livability of Delta's most vulnerable populations. The results from our microsystems test can be found in the HAPS 
or harmful algae blooms report map maintained by the California Water Boards. Our findings demonstrate the importance of increasing water monitoring along Region 5. From that data source, it is known that in this year, 2022, the total and most common HAPS reports labeled as caution were 494 cases. 209 of those cases, almost half of these reports were spotted in Region 5 Central Valley. The socioeconomic disparities across the Central Valley are widely known. Witnessing the impact heat waves and heavy water diversion have on the compromised Delta environmental justice communities only aggravates the stressors under which these communities survive. The sections on the draft environmental impact report covering cyanobacteria and environmental justice must reflect these concerns and act upon them more adequately. Further neglecting the demands of climate change will deteriorate the Delta ecology and worsen disparities and displacement conditions among environmental justice communities. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Our next commenter is P.T. Ramirez. Hello. Hi. Hi, my name is P.T. Ramirez. I'm a tribal council member from the California Valley Miwok tribe, also known as Sheep Ranch Rancheria. And I'm an assistant cultural resource specialist from my tribe. I've been uh, monitoring the Delta Conveyance Project since the beginning, and our tribe is in opposition to the project. We definitely don't want to see this project come through. There's a lot of cultural resources that are endangered along those waterways. Uh, our tribal footprint goes from Mount Diablo all the way to Calaveras County. And along those waterways, we have uh, mutual relations with uh, the different tribes that are along that way. Uh, we're concerned with all the plant life, animal life that is going to be, uh, could be devastated by this project going through and also could uh, become extinct. A lot of the village sites are along the ways, even though uh, the drilling holes that we have been on and the um, testing areas have gone outside of the, the tribal cultural village sites, they're still along the same pathways. So there are things along this Delta Conveyance project that could be ruined if the project does go through, along with uh, all of our cultural resources, such as elderberries, tule, willows, the black oaks, et cetera, or I'm sorry, the black walnuts. Um, there's a lot of plant life that possibly could be ruined with the water being taken and the Delta Convention project going through. We are cultural practitioners. We still do fishing. We still do gathering all along these waterways. And our tribe really does not want this project to go through. Uh, since the beginning of the time, our tribe has always utilized the waterways. We've always lived along the waterways and Currently, the resources that are still available are becoming far and few between, and the, a lot of the um, invasive plants are taking over the native plants that were there. And it's our concern that this project goes through, things could possibly be eradicated from this day forward. We will not be able to have access uh, along with the fish life, there's already minimal amount of water for the salmon to be running through. Uh, the Delta smelt's already on the endangered species list. And our tribe just really is in opposition to this project. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Our next three commenters will be Brenda Bass, Victor Reyes, and Liz Amston. We'll begin with Brenda Bass. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. I am Brenda Bass with the California Chamber of Commerce. Cal Chamber is the largest broad-based business advocate to government in California. Our membership represents one quarter of the private sector jobs in California and includes companies of all sizes from every industry within the state. California's water issues are well-documented and well-known. 
but chief among them is that we are unable to adequately move water when it's available to us. Every year, water flows out to sea because our current infrastructure is unable to move uh, high flows to where it is needed. If the Delta Conveyance Project had been operational at the end of 2021, when we saw record-breaking storm events, approximately 236,000 acre feet of water could have been captured and moved into storage. That would have been enough water for 2.5 million Californians for a full year. In times like the current drought, it becomes especially apparent that we need to be able to capture water when it's available. This can only be done with modernized conveyance infrastructure. We cannot solve our water supply issues through uh, conservation or developing water, uh, local water sources alone. This is not an either or, but an all of the above approach that's needed. Um, conserving and developing new uh, local water resources is an important piece of the puzzle, but we must invest in our conveyance system. It is the only way to make all of these uh, proposed local solutions work most effectively. We encourage the state to move forward with a project that is an affordable and viable solution to improve the reliability of our water distribution system. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your comment. Our next commenter is Victor Reyes, and that will be followed by Liz Amston. Victor? Hi, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can, thank you. Hi. Uh, hi, so my name is Victor Reyes. I am here on behalf of the Valley Industry and Commerce Association. We are here in strong support of the governor's plan to protect our state and local water supplies by fixing the water distribution network through the Delta. The release of the environmental impact review represents progress in moving the project forward, with the Bethany alignment being a step in the right direction with attempts to end old conflicts while still pushing a project that is sufficient to protect water supplies and the economy relies on a reliable water system. Investments in our water infrastructure now will pay dividends in the future as we secure our water supplies and protect hundreds of thousands of regional jobs that depend on the stability of this water source. The proposed Delta project will engineer a system that better captures water when it is abundant, making it available during periods of extreme drought, which we are currently suffering through. We're eager to work with the administration to move this project forward and see it through completion. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Our next commenter is Liz Amston. Liz? Hello, um, I'm a concerned stakeholder in that anyone living in California should be aware of and concerned about the history and future of California's water use. Millions of people in disadvantages, disadvantaged communities depend on the state water project as a source of safe and affordable water. Yep. The Delta Conveyance Project needs to stop playing the disadvantaged community card about 6 million Californians when the state is not willing to provide education, health care, affordable housing, stop gentrification, and respect polluters. And are these communities of people being forced off their land and out of their houses by demands of corporate profiteers who are losing their homes because big ag is draining the groundwater out from under them for corporate profit and the state refuses to step in and help them? Or the profiteers themselves, the Stuart Resnicks and the Wall Street investors? How about making users accountable, not individuals dependent on wells, but big ag and big oil and mining, which are accelerating depletion and poisoning of our groundwater? If rain and snow fall in the winter and spring, but the greatest demand and need is the summer and fall. It's simple, we need to adapt. Open reservoirs, the California aqueduct and much of the Colorado River system loses up to 50% of its water to evaporation and seepage. We need to focus on resolving those issues first. Sea level raise, rise is another concern since slow moving salt water intruding into the Delta contaminates the, will contaminate, contaminate the state's water supply and has been aggravated by bad water policies throughout the state. California is also overdue for a 100-year flood. It's been 160 years since the Great Flood of 1862 that put the entire Central Valley, including the city of Sacramento, under 6 to 20 feet of water. Are we prepared for flooding, for contamination of agricultural land, and of the state's water system? Existing facilities have been incredibly environmentally damaging and use huge amounts of electricity, all the more profit for power generators and a demand component for more fossil fuels. Construction will have further impact on our wildlife, natural habitats, and ecological systems up and down the state. A pumping plant needed to lift the water from the conveyance system tunnel up to the existing Bethany Reservoir will require huge amounts of power, requiring more dams, more environmental damage, and more profit. 
Does it reduce energy needed to move water or use more? Um, much of the existing systems or facilities are open air, more evaporation, more saline buildup, adding salts to soil, more, eat, more ease uh, for terrorists to poison. Climate change is only aggravating the challenges. There's no question of the need and many compelling reasons to modernize the infrastructure, but please step back and look holistically at the preservation of land, air, marine and eco ecosystem habitats, as well as our water. To what degree can we continue to tolerate rapacious short-term corporate greed? The original systems that move water through the state were built as pork for folks in Congress to benefit wealthy investors and as part of the game of brinkmanship between the Army Corps of Engineers, the U.S. Bureau of Reclamations, the California State Water and a board and a consortium of bought and paid for politicians, all liberals of government. Local water agencies have always been driven by uh, inside of political considerations, historically by agricultural interests. Water in California continues to be a profit center for big business and big ag, which fund our politicians' elections. You will almost certainly be issuing waivers to those who will profit from this project. The state needs to insist its inhabitants and agriculture readapt to a semi-arid climate and revert to the natural river system. Yes, California needs to improve the state water system by reducing use of water for crops unsuitable for our climate, by stopping the use of state water to grow alfalfa and other high water use crops for, outport, for export and functionally exporting our water to foreign countries for corporate profit. Liz, if I could ask you to please wrap up so okay. that we can have time for everyone to present. Thank you. Two paragraphs. Uh, Newsom is correct. We need to preserve fisheries, but also our wetlands, our groundwater, and force the agricultural sector to become accountable for all water use, paying market rate prices to force them to conserve and replace. Cheap water subsidies and tax breaks for big ag and its investors must stop. Housing and farms should not be built on floodplains. Dams should be removed as soon as they are gone and all efforts be made to restore the ecology of the state before California becomes a wasteland. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. If you have additional comments that you'd like to make, I'd like to remind you, you are welcome to send those via email mail or using the online comment form. Our next five commenters are Joanne, John Armstrong, Cynthia Cortez, Artie Valencia, and Sarah Medina. Joanne, you should get a notice to unmute your mic now. Maybe try that one more time. I think it just got remuted. Hello? Yes, hi. Hi, um, my name is Roxanne Fuentes. Um, and I, all project alternatives in the draft EIR propose three water supply conveyance alignments or pipes combined with proposed construction of new north delta diversion and conveyance facilities capable of carrying 3,000 to 7,500 cubic feet per second. Intake A would be south of and on the other side of the Sacramento River from Clarksburg. Intake B would be just north of Hood. And intake C would be between Hood and Cortland. There already exists the California Aqueduct, which is more than 701 miles long and carries water to the south. It delivers water to 27 million people and irrigation for 750,000 acres of farmland. The Delta Mendota Canal is 117 miles long and delivers water from the Sacramento River to the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta. The Delta Mendota Canal California Intertie project was completed in 2012 at a cost of $34 million to deliver water to Southern California. Sea levels are already rising and California has been having increasingly low water years. It is not advisable to build more outtake pipes from the Sacramento River as this will cause salt water to intrude into the Delta. This will destroy valuable farmland, destroy freshwater fisheries, and introduce salt water into the water supply of four millions of people. The Delta provides rich and productive habitat for more than 500 species of fish and wildlife, all of which will be impacted by this project. Waters affected by the project include vital habitat for many fish, including Pacific salmon, ground fish, and coastal pelagic fish. The southern resident killer whale is considered to be impacted because of potential effects on their Chinook salmon prey. Delta agriculture accounted for $4.6 billion statewide. All alternatives would result in the conversion of important farmland. Up to 5,736 acres would be lost. Each alternative would cause 
the conversion of Williamson Act farmland or farmland in a farmland security zone. Groundwater storage, conservation, recycling, reuse, and desalination should all be used to provide more water. The people should be allowed to vote on this proposed project. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Our next commenter is John Armstrong. I looked all through the um, DEIR. <clears throat> I chose the public health section. And I didn't see any mention of fertilizers not anywhere in the DEIR <clears throat> and only one really insignificant mention of herbicides, which is kind of a glaring omission because it's the um, fertilizers that cause the algal blooms and the pesticides. You gave some attention to that, but kind of minimal. Uh, the pesticides and fertilizers and um, herbicides have a very well documented effect on currently big increases in autoimmune diseases. So increasing any more water to the Central Valley uh, promotes more usage of herbicides, pesticides, and fertilizers. It's called, end up causing a lot of disease. You cannot really, um, well, to be real specific, I got time to mention one that people can relate with, uh, diabetes. Uh, toxins like um, arsenic, pesticides, and herbicides are typically found in type 1 and type 2 diabetes. These compounds trigger and or, and or destroy the insulin-producing beta cells in the pancreas. That's specifically, very specific. I can't get much more specific than that. Um, it's a big uh, trigger for, let's see, I should say herbicides specifically are a big trigger for um, um, neurological diseases, which are autoimmune, uh, Parkinson's, Al Alzheimer's, ALS, multiple sclerosis, they're on the increase. Uh, power elite likes to underplay these facts. Power elite being medical, the medical business, uh, international agribiz, that kind of thing. Uh, one more comment. You cannot really say, you cannot say that the Central Valley and Imperial Valley grow our food for us because they don't. Most of it's going to Pacific Rim countries, China, Japan, and Korea. That's where it's going. Like the one that gets all the publicity is the 80% of exported uh, the almond industry output. So, you know, like, but there's, there's lots of other crops, you know, and you got the alfalfa for the, the cow industry worldwide. But anyway, the um, you can't, you know, we're exporting. The Californians are paying for it, but the uh, the water barons and the politicians involved and the companies involved, they get the money and the Pacific Rim countries get the food. They get the embedded water, they get the mineral resource, but us Californians pay for it. So my, my major question here is, how long is this farce gonna continue? Done. Thank you for your comment. Our next three commenters are Cynthia Cortez, Artie Valencia, and Sarah Medina. So Cynthia Cortez, you'll be next. Hello all, thank you for the opportunity to comment. My name is Cynthia Cortez. I am an intern um, for Restore the Delta. I have spent a lot of the last few months working on harmful algal bloom monitoring in both the water with Restore the Delta and in the air with the University of North Carolina's Institute of Marine Sciences. I have some concerns with the Delta Conveyance Project in relation to the increasing bloom problem in the Delta. First off, it has been recognized by many that there isn't enough monitoring being done, which leads to gaps in data or lack of understanding of the greater threat these blooms pose. I believe that we need to increase our monitoring as well as finding solutions before a greater issue is created by exporting more water. If bloom activity in the delta makes its way into the water during the exporting process, we could be seeing more blooms where the water is stored, which widens the expanse of these bloom problems. Not only is this a water quality concern, it is also an air quality concern. Not to mention, exporting water from the upstream of the delta will likely increase residence times downstream where we've been seeing um, our worst blooms. I feel like there are too many problems that need solving within the Delta, including the HABs problem that we need to focus on before moving forward with a tunnel project. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. 
Our next commenter is Artie Valencia. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Artie Valencia, the Community Organizer and Government Liaison for Restore the Delta, and I'm here today to provide a comment on behalf of South Stockton Environmental Justice Communities. Restore the Delta urges you to investigate and collect analysis for the sea level rise that will flood intakes in Sacramento. The Delta Stewardship Council shows that California is already experiencing warmer temperature, more extreme heat, harsher storms that increase flood risk and rising sea levels. With the combination of these factors, there's a high probability that the intakes will become flooded. If you do not decrease these impacts in San Joaquin County, you will hurt these existing pumps and endanger the lives and homes of environmental justice communities living in one of the most vulnerable flood points in the state. According to the Delta Stewardship Council Vulnerability Assessment, 17,000 homes will be affected by flooding and $28 billion in damages will be accrued for critical buildings um, and that will ensue for the city of Stockton. Additionally, families living at Conway homes behind the levees are just one example of communities that will be affected by this. There is no sufficient evidence or analysis in your environmental impact report to suggest that the Sacramento intake pumps will not be affected by sea level rise due to intense heavy rains based on climate change. Modeling in the EIR suggests that there would be a very gradual capturing of wet winter flows that on average will be a 0.08 increment increase of sea level rise because intakes crowd the channel. This will displace the water and raise some small amount of water, but this analysis completely ignores massive flooding. Based on the Delta Stewardship Council's findings, don't you think that your project is also in danger of experiencing flood events? There is no evidence in your EIR report to suggest that Sacramento intake pumps will not succumb to flooding, thus raising concerns for cities like Stockton, which need protection from flooding induced by the tunnel and climate change. Calculations of the ERR downplay the rate of climate change while overinflating concrete in measures. Progress. measures. The ERR acknowledges that Stockton will be affected by Delta flooding as the region is dependent on Delta water supply. Though inland, the delta is vulnerable to rising seas. The stability of the levees protecting us are tested daily by tides, river inflows, and raising sea levels. However, there is no analysis on how flooding will affect this particular area. Stockton is a port city surrounded by bodies of water with decaying levee systems that were built long ago before climate change and water diversion tactics. These levees will not withstand the pressure from the, from, sorry, from the broadly underappreciated risk of severe floods. Delta from use... Our data from UCLA climate scientist Daniel Swain reveals that the coming superstorm is a rapid possession of atmospheric rivers and that will be the ultimate test of current dams and levees. It is known that levee failures can also damage key features of the Delta ecosystem existing on heavily altered landscape, including managed wetlands. Additionally, additionally levee failure could degrade the Delta water quality if waters rush into heavily subsided Delta islands, pulling together or pulling higher salinity into the water. Lastly, I'd like the EIR to address the degradation of levee roads due to high volume tra tra truck traffic during tunnel related construction. It will add another cost to maintain these roads to ensure that the flooding does not occur once these pumps become operational. Current flood- I can ask you just to wrap up your comment, please. Thank you. Yeah. Current flood prevention measures are insufficient and need further analysis. And then lastly, as you can see, there are a variety of reasons why Further analysis and mitigation are needed to ensure that the intakes are not flooded by the megastorm and the projected intense heavy rains to come. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Our next commenter is Sarah Medina. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Sarah Medina, the Sustainable Agriculture Coordinator with Restore the Delta, representing the Central Valley. According to the DWR, approximately 37,000 acres identified as prime farmland will be affected either permanently or temporarily while this project is being built. The draft EIR states that it is estimated from these 375,000, there will be 4.6 billion in economic output, in which according to the San Joaquin Council of Government, California, three out of the $4.6 billion coming out, which is two thirds of the economic output come from San Joaquin alone. This is because San Joaquin grows various crops. In the study, in the case study, we looked at figure 15.1 crop distribution in the study area where the map outlines the different crops grown in each location. Why is there no clear identification where the tunnel will cross through on the map or not even mentioned on the legend of this figure? There is no clear clarification of what exact types of crops will be affected by the project 
from this map, unless one goes back and forth between maps to find the answer. Another reason why it is important to have clarification as to what crops will be around the construction site is due to the particulate matter, which according to DE, the DIR can inhibit their normal can inhibit normal respiratory and photosynthesis processes on crops. Dust can also create an environment where, can, where disease can affect certain plants for years to come. Has there been research on airborne diseases these crops can suffer from such high levels of pollution? Nitrogen oxide is another air quality issue that, according to the DEIR, will exceed all health standards. So how much will this cost the farmers when the surrounding crops are affected by the high nitrogen and dusty environments the project will create? Why is there no clear breakdown as to what types of crops will be affected by the air quality, including the amount of money that this can cost farmers, ultimately decreasing everyone's economic output? Thank you. Thank you for your comment. I'd like to ask our interpreters if there's anyone in the uh, language rooms that would like to make a comment, if you could go ahead and raise your hand so that I'll know to call on you. Our next three speakers will be Mackenzie Owens, Molly Colton, and Amber McDowell. We'll begin with Mackenzie Owens. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can, thank you. Okay, perfect. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Mackenzie Owens, climate water advocate for Restore the Delta. The proposed Delta Conveyance Tunnel project is a flawed proposition that will result in disastrous ecological consequences in the surrounding project areas. While it is stated that the project will contribute to climate change mitigation, the DEIR provides hardly any alternatives for environmental degradation. First, the DEIR fails to account for any alternatives that reduce diversions from the Delta. Moreover, all DEIR alternatives involve increased water exports which will severely impact the lack of flows in the Delta, which will contribute to more harmful algal blooms and less water for both endangered and culturally important species, such as the Delta smelt and winter and spring run Chinook salmon. On that note, how is it considered that the Delta ecosystem would be assisted by the project's intentions of implementing more reduced and diverted flows when more water is needed rather than less for a sufficient survivability of fish? In addition, we also have the ongoing aridification of the state and the uncertainty of how much water will be available in the upcoming years. It seems that this project will only end in high costs and little reward. How can we be comfortable with the investment of a project that will become that could potentially become obsolete while contributing to stressors on the environment and marginalized groups in the communities surrounding? I implore you to reevaluate and reconsider moving forward with this project. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Our next three commenters are Molly Colton, Amber McDowell, and Kyle Griffith. And we'll start now with Molly Colton. Good afternoon. My name is Molly Colton, and I'm speaking on behalf of Sierra Club California, the legislative and regulatory advocacy arm of the Sierra Club in California. I wanted to reiterate and echo many of the concerns that were voiced at the previous workshop on September 13th, as well as many of the comments heard today. 30 days is not enough time to review and comment on this document. I wrote 30 days, but I meant 90 days. Um, on September 2nd, the Delta Independent Science Board submitted a letter requesting a 30-day extension on the comment period, and the Delta Counties Coalition requested a 90-day extension back in August. Sierra Club California also submitted a request for an extension back in August, to which we have still not received a response. I urge DWR to heed these requests and grant an extension for the EIR comment and review period. Additionally, the draft EIR bases its impact assessment on a 2020 baseline and specifically excludes the consideration of climate change in that assessment and mitigation of impacts. The climate change analysis that is included only models the conditions that would be experienced in 2040 when the project would first become operational. To fully understand the impacts of this project, DWR should conduct modeling for the project during its proposed operational period, not just in 2040. The public and decision makers need to be informed as to how this project will interact with climate change to fully understand the impacts this project will have over its lifetime, not just in the first year that it will become operational. Thank you for taking the time to allow folks to comment today. Thank you for your comment. Our next commenter is Amber McDowell. I'm Amber McDowell from the Sacramento County Farm Bureau. 
The conversion of 3,787.9 acres, if implementing Alternative 5, but up to potentially 5,737.7 acres with the other considered options of Delta agriculture land is a disregard for human survival in the future. Whereas new water sources can be created such as reservoirs or desalinization plants, productive farmland cannot be created. Your mitigation of protecting some other piece of farmland as trade for one that you're destroying is a contradiction. If you're going to destroy that land, it's destroyed. This type of mitigation is not a valid solution as you can't just create prime farmland. This traded farmland will already be in existence somewhere. And so your proposed tra trade mitigation results still in an overall decrease of farmland and overall decrease of food supply in the future. Even worse is that you're going to destroy farmland that is already protected. So saying that you're gonna protect another piece instead really isn't true as you aren't ensuring the current protected farmland will actually stay protected. The Delta is a unique area with prime productive farmland. Each acre is extremely important and irreplaceable. Even more of an issue is that 1,217.8 acres of that 3,700 acres are already protected under the Williamson Act and farmland security zones. The purpose of those is to protect farmland to ensure an adequate food supply for an ever growing population. You acknowledged on this project that it would create conflicts with both the Williamson's, Williamson Act lands and farmland security zones, but you're still willing to go destroy those prime farmlands and ultimately create food shortages for people in the future. Specifically, you state that you will remove uh, between 744 to 902 acres of protected farmland um, that will be permanently destroyed with this project that are protected under the Williamson Act contracts and farmland security zone. Again, this contradicts your prior mitigation strategy of trading farmland, showing your obvious you know, disregard for the programs that are already there to protect farmland by trying to find a substitute and not really addressing the real impacts that this project will do to the area. Your other mitigation of only taking a portion of a parcel or important farmland is still greatly impacts the overall sustainability of that entire farmland parcel. It's harder to efficiently farm those smaller parcels and it becomes uneconomical and unproductive. In the long run, um, you have that 250 acres of this remnant farmland of little tiny pieces that you're suggesting but to fill those with hobby farmers, that again is not being evaluated or looked at. If I could ask you IR, to wrap up your comment, please. Thank yeah, you. Just about there. You're not evaluating or mitigating those changes that will be occurring because of those hobby farms where it will lead to more residential and industrial uses on those parcels that will evolve. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be here until 2 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. We are not going to be presenting any new or additional information at this time. So please raise your hand, or if you called in by phone, please press star nine if you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you may make one verbal comment today. Thank you. As a reminder, you may also mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. These comments can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can also be submitted on an online form at deltaconveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR Attention Delta Conveyance Office, P.O. Box 942836, Sacramento, California, 94236-001. During this portion of today's meeting, please feel free to raise your hand or press star nine if you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Thank you. Our next commenter is Dan Bakker. Dan, 
Hi, my name's Dan Barker, and I'm an independent journalist that's covered the fish, environmental justice, and water issue for 40 years. First of all, I wanted to say that I completely support the Sierra Club California's um, request for an extension of a 90 day comment period that Molly Colton just talked about. Um, second, I wanted to register my strong opposition to the Delta Tunnel and the uh, draft environmental impact report. Different versions of the same gigantic and, and massive and wasteful public works project the peripheral canal, the Bay Delta Conservation Plan, the California Water Fix, and now a single Delta conveyance cast a dark, tack, toxic shadow over California water policy since it was first rejected by California voters in November 1982 as a peripheral canal. Uh, tunnel opponents claim the tunnel will protect the reliability of water transport infrastructure, address the impacts of sea, li sea level rise, and improve deltas aquatic conditions, but the project will do none of these things. Instead, it will hasten extinction of Sacramento River winter and spring run Chinook salmon, Central Valley steelhead, Delta and long fin smelt, um, and green sturgeon. Um, according to a recent blog by Doug O'Bee of NRDC, DWR's proposed operations of the Delta Tunnel are significantly less protective of the environment than the operations that the National Marine Fishery Service and other agencies required for the proposed twin tunnel project only a few years ago. All of the alternatives in the DEIR substantially increase water exports from the Delta on an average by approximately 500,000 acre feet per year. The entire Delta conveyance project is based on the irrational and unscientific premise that diverting more Sacramento River water before it reaches the Delta will somehow restore the Delta ecosystem while providing water supply reliability. I don't know of any water diversion project in world or U.S. history where taking more water out of a river or estuary has restored that river or estuary. The Delta Tunnel project, if constructed, would be no different. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. I want to ask if there are any tribal leaders who are interested in making a comment or any elected officials, if you could please go ahead and raise your hand so we'll know you would like to make a comment. I'll also check in with our interpreters and ask that they raise their hand if there's anyone in the interpretation rooms who would like to make a comment as well. As a reminder, you can mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. These comments can be mailed, can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can also be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR, attention Delta Conveyance Office, PO Box 942836, Sacramento, California, 94236-001. As a reminder, we will be here until 2 p.m. to take your verbal comments. We are in the verbal comment portion of today's meeting. We are not going to be presenting any new or additional information at this time. Please raise your hand, or if you called in, dot press star nine if you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment today. Thank you. Our next commenter is one Ken to California. Oh, good afternoon. This is Ken Sanford. Thank you. Thank you for calling on me. Appreciate it. And uh, I just have a few verbal comments to make. Uh, uh, the, the DEI does, does not adequately adequately report the existing condition of the South Delta Bay region. Conditions exist that require the addition of stored and imported water, local reservoirs and the Sacramento River 
to maintain the quality of water that is suitable for use by municipals and agriculture. This condition is brought about by the over allocation of waters of the San Joaquin River, over commitment of the South Delta water to the Central Valley, and the lack of water volume in the US South Delta. Of course, there's not much we can do about the lack of water volume in the South Delta unless you want to make a huge commitment to dredge it. I, I know there have been dredging operations in the, uh, for the shipping canals in the North and the Central Deltas that have greatly increased their flows of water, tidal water, and the flood water flows back to the Pacific Ocean. But the water flows in the San Joaquin River are so low in the summer that 90% of the water in the last 40 kilometers of the river uh, is comprised of Sacramento River water. This situation creates conditions that are determined detrimental to migratory fish's ability to locate their native waters. Also, the many diversions of water in the South Delta contribute to the loss of many returning mature fish and the inability of newly hatched fish to find suitable pathways to the Pacific Ocean. For many decades, mitigations have been implemented to control the situation. However, much of the Delta and its biodiversity has been lost. I think I have time to get a quote here from the California Department of Water Resources. Uh, over the last 150 years, the Delta has lost 98% of the native habitat that support these species. Scientists attribute to the steep decline of Delta ecosystems to fish, to drought, and to human ability, excuse me, human activity, including the development of levees supporting agricultural operations and water conveyance. Absent efforts to protect native species, we can expect many more species to go extinct over the next century. Now, I call for the state and the federal governments to step, step in and establish some regulations that will <clears throat> reallocate waters of this region and preserve the situation in the Delta. Uh, not, it won't restore it to its original pristine conditions, but at least we can slow the degra degradation. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. As a reminder, you can mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be mailed to emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on an online form at deltaconveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR, attention Delta Conveyance Office. P.O. Box 942836, Sacramento, California, 94236-001. Again, we will be here until 2 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. We are not going to present any additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment today. Thank you. You can mail, email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can also be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR, attention Delta Conveyance Office, P.O. Box 942836, Sacramento, California, 94236-001. We will be here until 2 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of today's meeting. We are not going to present any additional information at this time. Please raise your hand if you would like to be called on, or if you called in by phone, press star nine if you would like to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you may make one verbal comment today. Thank you. Our next commenter is Robert Robin Durston. 
You should receive a note to come off mute. Thank you. Um, this report concerns me because the parties involved with implementing the EIR are more concerned with fulfilling water delivery contracts and other water delivery agreements than protecting the water quality for Delta residents. This is assuming there will be extra water to send to the southern part of the state. Indigenous people have the oldest water rights. These rights should be respected, not wealthy agriculture and big corporations. Pumping water out of the Delta will destroy the Delta, turning it into a swamp. The water quality will degrade, the fish will be warmed in less water and will die. Delta levees are needed whether there is to be a single tunnel or not. This is because Delta levees are necessary protection against increased flood risk resulting from climate change impacts for the Delta's 4 million residents, including environmental justice communities. Additionally, other operating conditions dictate that the South Delta pumping plants of the state and federal water projects must receive water through existing Delta channels at times when the tunnel intakes in the North cannot operate. Very recent climate change studies indicate that permafrost thawing, peat soil fires, and faster than expected loss of Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets all are contributing to the increased likelihood of abrupt climate change effects, including sea level rise. Climate change impacts within the Delta include more extreme flood events, reduced runoff into the Delta watershed, warmer water temperatures, and fresher, reduced freshwater flows that will uh, alter environmental conditions in the Delta and the amount of water available. That's why the it's important to keep the levees, they protect against flooding. We need the water to send to the San Francisco Bay and the Delta communities. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 2 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of today's meeting. We are not going to present any additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. And please remember that you can make one verbal comment today. You can also mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com, and comments can be mailed to DWR, Attention Delta Conveyance Office, P.O. Box 942836, Sacramento, California, 94236-2. Thank you. We will be here until 2 p.m. Pacific to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of today's meeting. We are not going to present any additional information at this time. Please raise your hand if you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. If you called in by phone, you may press star nine to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment today. As a reminder, you can also mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com and comments can be mailed to DWR, Attention Delta Conveyance Office, P.O. Box 942836, Sacramento, California, 94236-0001. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will have 
uh, until 2 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. We are not going to present any additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment today. As a reminder, you can also mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com and comments can be mailed to DWR Attention Delta Conveyance Office, PO Box 942836, Sacramento, California, 94236-0001. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 2 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we're in the verbal comment portion of the meeting, and we are not going to present any additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment today. As a reminder, you can mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR, Attention Delta Conveyance Office, PO Box 94. 2836 Sacramento, California 94236 0001. Thank you. Our next commenter is Anna Swenson, Clarksburg. Hi, my name is Anna Swenson. I have been um, involved in this project, which you guys say is a different project, but it's the same project as it was for BDCP and water fix, and now the Delta conveyance um, project. And um, one of my comments is um, we we'll have a very short window for public comment. We're supposed to have our comments in by October 27th. It is a huge document. We finally received some flash drives that we were able to distribute to the community only yesterday to have a change sheet um that was given out that has changes on it that then have to be like redistributed so it seems really impossible for us to be able to effectively and adequately provide the public comment that you guys claim you want so dearly when we aren't being given enough time to properly review the document a lot of us are not um, lawyers or professionals, and um, we have to dig and scour through your um, very, very heavy document and then have changes that are made on um, 922, which is approximately a month before the, the comments are officially due. So we are once again asking for an extension of time for the public to adequately be able to review the document to review the devastating destruction that this project will bring to our communities and to be able to provide comment that would, you know, represent the actual communities that you are affecting. Um, my other public comment is um, when in the history of any project has it ever been successful to take water out of an estuary and um, actually provide any type of healthy benefits to the estuary, to the communities, to the fish populations. We have salmon fish populations that are crashing and um, runs that are completely disappearing. So the idea that somehow magically um, in, in some sort of unicorn fantasy that taking more, money, more water out of the estuary at the cost of billions of dollars to my children, everyone else's children and their grandchildren will actually be an effective alternative to what we have now. Um, we really need other alternatives to be explored and, um, you know, actually 
considered for a viability for you know this this wicked problem that we have but the solution is not to take more water out of the estuary or to destroy the historical legacy communities of the delta we urge all of the agencies that are involved to please put this money instead into finding viable alternatives that serve all of california not just the folks to the south thank you Thank you for your comment. As a reminder, you can mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com, and comments can be mailed to DWR, attention Delta Conveyance Office, PO Box. 942836, Sacramento, California, 94236-0001. We will be taking verbal comments until 2 p.m. today. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting, and we're not going to be presenting any additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star 9 if you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. And please remember, you can make one verbal comment today. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 2 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. We are not going to present any additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment today. As a reminder, you can mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR, attention Delta Conveyance Office, PO Box 942836, Sacramento, California, 94236-0001. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 2 p.m. Pacific to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting. We are not going to present any additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine to indicate that you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment today. As a reminder, you can mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR, attention Delta Conveyance Office, PO Box 942836. Sacramento, California, 94236-0001. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be here until 2 p.m. to take your verbal comments. As a reminder, we are in the verbal comment portion of the meeting, and we are not going to present any additional information at this time. Please raise your hand or press star nine if you would like to be called on to make a verbal comment. Please remember that you can make one verbal comment today. As a reminder, you can mail or email comments to DWR before the close of the comment period. Comments can be emailed to Delta Conveyance Comments at water.ca.gov. Comments can be submitted on a form online at deltaconveyanceproject.com. And comments can be mailed to DWR, Attention Delta Conveyance Office, 
PO Box 942836, Sacramento, California, 94236-0001. Thank you. It is 1.57 and this virtual public hearing will now conclude. We have one more virtual public hearing scheduled to take verbal comments. That meeting is Wednesday, September 28th at 5.30 p.m. Meeting information is available at deltaconveyanceproject.com. Thank you all for joining us today. We appreciate your input and involvement in this process. If you need further assistance, please visit the website or contact us at delta conveyance at water.ca.gov or by calling 1-866-924-9955. This hearing is adjourned.